Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life. running a little late tonight, but uh, that's okay. Uh, it is eight hours into the 24th day of November uh, 2021, and this is the Gnosis Vlog. We were just talking about Yvette Carnell and ADOS, and the reason why we're talking about that because ADOS, the American descendant of slaves, is global. It's not simply uh, specific to the blacks. This crap has been going on over the world. Slavery today is global. This is why Ghislaine Maxwell is on trial. Uh, what Ghislaine's Maxwell's trial is actually about is about global slavery. And of course, uh, this is not black slavery because the choice of meat, uh, when you talk about Ghislaine Maxwell, is not black. The choice is white and this is particularly blonde and Asian. That's your preference in terms of meat uh, for this global trade in human beings. Now, there, of course, there are other degrees of human beings that will be sold into slavery, not just the whites and, you know, the, the blondes and the Asians. Uh, there are other gradations of meat, and just the way every, everything else has a gradation to it. I mean, this is how the elites who uh, run these uh, uh, global empires uh, this is how they operate. They operate by using people, using human beings as animals. And they create an environment where they pick the best. And this is what the whole school, the whole schooling education system, the, the education system is about finding the best, the cream of the crop, and reserving that cream of the crop and bringing them into something known as the vassal state. There are very few who will ever get up to the class of, well, let's say, priests. Uh, because these people at the top, the elites, are Gnostics. They believe in a god. Not necessarily the god we think about, or, or, or most people think about, but they have god. Matter of fact, in many cases, they have multiple gods. They're not simply, they're not Christians. You understand? They are not Christians by any sense of the matter. They are, they are in many cases, evil. They're actually working with evil. And they understand that they are working with evil, but well, they still need certain functions. They can't do everything on their own. And so they choose the people who will best serve them to serve their particular needs. And so very few people will actually get up to the point where they're part of the elite because it, the elite has nothing to do with actually money or power. It has to do with basically the, the belief in this evil. Uh, and once you have sold your soul, this is going to say Faustian bargain. This is, uh, you can go read the book about Faust. Uh, there's something called, uh, uh, that should be read. And you also need to sit down and read, uh, basically, Milton's Lost Paradise and uh, Dante's Inferno. This is where you have the deal with the devil, the, the, the contract with evil. And this stuff actually exists up in the upper, in, in the upper called the elite classes. This is that stuff that actually exists. And so what happens Elite does have power, it does have money, but it is not external necessarily. In other words, the environment is very closed off and it is very difficult. Only the initiated get into the upper levels of, of, of the elite. Unless you have your proper initiations, and these things are not nice things, uh, all you have to do to understand these initiations, go look at the history of initiations from, uh, from Yale University Skull, Skull and Bones uh, fraternity. Understand the initiations into the skull and bones, and you'll begin to understand the initiation, the initiations, the initiation rites into the elite. And this is where you get all this Illuminati stuff. This is where you get all of the Freemasonry stuff. This is where it all comes from. But you're always when you talk about Freemasonry, you're talking about Illuminati. These are fractions of what's actually there. You're only seeing bits and pieces of it. You're not getting the entire thing. It's not until you go in and do a good study on Gnosis. Again, the pieces are not going to be out there. They're hidden because they're designed to be hidden. So they're not going to be out there where you think they're going to be. And then this is where 
I stumble into the stuff because I'm, I treat the inter, the internet as a library. So I'm always perusing around, going here, going there. I don't have any particular direction that I'm going in, but <laughs> you know what are you doing? I don't know. I'm just you know going down this aisle here. You know, in terms of the library, and you pick a book here, you pick a book. You know, you, you pick up these different sources, the sources of information. You can go through them, you read through them, uh, you listen to lectures. Some of a lot of these lectures, you know, uh, like Lionel does now. He's he's got this private channel now. Uh, you know, you know, LionelMedia.com, and he's doing hour-long, two-hour-long things, and uh, you sit there, it's like, oh, God, two hours. And that, 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 that's, you know, people, people ask why I have the uh, car, the uh, SpongeBob SquarePants and all the stuffed animals in the background, is because, uh, you know, you, you are this nerd, you're doing all this reading and studying. You're not going to be paying attention for, the, for, for uh, let's say you're doing you find three or four lectures, three lectures, three lectures at, at three hours a piece. You're talking, you're talking about nine hours of lectures. And so you learn how to watch lectures with other things on. And my choice of poison in terms of uh, other things, these sort of other distractions as well. And listening to the lecture will actually have cartoons on. <laughs> that's, that's, that's how I got into the vlogs. The vlogs I like are along the lines of the cartoons. They have to have, some degree of conversation in them. So I typically like, in terms of the cartoons, I prefer the girl cartoons over the boy cartoons because the girl girl cartoons tend to have, with the female leads, tend to have more discussion, uh, a more of a dialogue than they do have fighting. That's the thing. Not that they don't have fighting and action and stuff like that. It, it, it tends to be more of it. In terms of the anime, the the um, the uh, genre I'm in is known as parody and slice of life. It's a subgenre. Uh, again, it's, it's, it's female dominated because the cartoons are nothing but discussions about the interactions that you see with pe with uh, the different friends and friend groups, and it's uh, it's the 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 interest, the amusement, is with the expressions and the uh, sort of reactions to various different comments and and, and uh, as these friends exist in this sort of basically a student world because this is where you have most of your your, your social interaction is typically junior high to uh, high school this is where you have most of your called girl drama and girl drama is, is not like boy drama but boy drama is you get the shit crook, you get the shit crook kicked out of you where in girl drama rather than having being fist and being physical it's more along the lines of a verbal abuse but it's done in such a manner that the verbal abuse has to be not open and direct, but rather couched, hidden behind a compliment. So the compliment becomes poison. <laughs> but you don't get the poison first. You get the compliment first, and the poison comes in afterwards. It's the sub It's a subtext. And so it's a, it's a little more complex than listening to a guy having a discussion, guys having a discussion. Because with the girls, there's always the, sub, the subcontext, the subtext, and, and so we always, you know, we listen to the girls. Well, well, what did he mean by that? And because girls could really do because they always think that there's always something behind some, that something that's being said. Uh, when they listen to a guy, they're trying. They go back to the girl mind, saying, "Oh, there must be something behind it." Where the guy has no co no concept of this. They don't. There really isn't a subcontext with guys. Guys will typically, you know, in many cases, will say what they mean, and there's no real subcontext behind it. There's When a guy is lying, he's straightforward lying, and there's no reason for it. Well, in terms in terms of a logical or, or, or function. In, the, in other words, guys don't have the emotional state that girls do. Let's put it that way. So when a guy comes up to a girl and starts talking, you know, talking her up, it's about the hunt. He's after her. She's, he's after her. And he will say whatever he needs to say in order to get what he wants. Once he's got what he's, what he wants, he's gone. You can <laughs> you can call the number he gives you. It's to a plate at the pizza place. <laughs> well, why did he give me a number to a pizza place? Because well, he was lying to you. Oh, doesn't he feel anything? Doesn't he feel any remorse? No, because guy in that state, the guys aren't thinking. It's not a, It's not. It's not that. Oh, I'm going to hurt somebody's feeling. Not they, they. 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 They put that completely out of mind. They're going after a particular target. This is it's, it's hunting. 
it's predatory. <laughs> and that's what it is. But, but God, girls never seem to learn. And, they, you know, I try to explain this to girls because a lot of times the girls are my friends. And I try to explain that, you know, a, a guy is on the hunt. But they never, you know, once the guy is cute enough, this uh, seems to go out of mind and the thinking stops. And so, but the thing is, is that for other guys, well, this is typical for the average guy. There are other guys out there who have more things, more, more specific in mind. This is uh, going into noses. This is particularly uh, what we call the typical path of noses. Uh, the typical path of noses is a left-hand path. Even though it seems nice in the beginning, the whole point, whole point the whole goal of left-hand path uh, of this not this uh, path is to create to create a, a a physical being to kill the soul, to destroy the thought, destroy the emotion, and have nothing but raw meat. And this brings you towards spiritual blackness. This is why it's called left-hand path. And ironically enough, the Democrats, the people who call themselves left, are openly left-hand path. It's about random destruction. It's about random uh, uh, bits of, of action that have no functional, no functional meaning in any form of spiritual sense. As a matter of fact, it's anti-spiritual. It pulls you away from being spiritual. And this is why, in many cases, a large chunk of the stuff is called anti-dharmic. Dharmic is your, your path towards heaven. And that means being selfless and being uh, uh, thoughtful, being humble, being, you know, not being proud. But the whole world, the whole world, even our, our class structure, tells us in terms of, of of how to succeed in society, it's about it's about yourself, about feeling good. You need self love. You need to pat yourself on the back. You need to talk and say in the mirror and say to, to bring out every morning. You need to say these positive affirmations. And what this is, it's all gobbledygook. And I see this all over the place. All these gurus popping up. Why are these gurus, gurus popping up? Because they're there to make you feel good. And as long as you start feeling good. People will spend thousands of they'll spend thousands of dollars on crystals that they rub together, they put in the moonlight, and they charge it up so that they can feel good the next day. Oh, we need to cleanse your aura. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I can I can see your aura a little off. You know, you you, you need you, you understand that your your aura problems, your, a lot of, and of course all your physical problems too. You know. The reason why you're sick is because you you're sick because you have toxins in your liver. Well, this whole detox thing. It's entirely gnostic in its origin. It's about the physical existence, about you know. But the thing is that again, once again, is it's actually deceit. If they can get you to believe something, they can sell you something. Once you believe, and this is the with that where people who are depressed and who have sort of lost their function in society. Uh, what you see is they start going towards. Oh, they start going towards things that aren't necessarily good for them, and, and but they don't see the bad. They see the only the good. Oh, this person's helped me out. He's going to make me feel better. You know? Yeah, he well, it, it makes you feel better once you. Well, several things. He lightens your load because he takes your money from you. He picks your pocket, takes your money, makes you look lighter. You know, all that money is wearing it. Down. All that money is weighing it down. You know, you need to buy this potion. You need to buy that potion. You need to buy this scented candle, or, or you need to have this tapestry on your wall. You need to have the beads on your door, and on and on and on. Of course, then there's the the ones who will, if, if they can get far enough with that and taken out, they've taken all your money. Then, they, uh, particularly if you're a girl, they'll start taking your clothes. Well, you know, you need to start breathing properly. Here, let me help you. I was, this, this, I've seen this. This is the problem. I've seen this. You try to warn the people away from it. This is what's happened, but they don't listen. Once a person has, has, has believes in something, there's almost no way to turn the person back. And unfortunately, the way to be a good friend is you have to be there when the whole thing fails, when the whole thing collapses, and you need to pick them up and try to put some of the pieces back together. Because, and what you need, to, and this is what you tell them that have done this, have been in this situation, that when you put the pieces back together, you're not gonna, you'll never put everything back together. 
what, what ha- whatever happened to you, what, what happened to you is something that is always going to be there. You will never be able to take it back, no matter how sore you are. And what happens is a lot of times when girls get into these situations, one of the things that kind of destroys and weighs on the mind is to say, I knew this. Why did I behave so stupidly? And they and they get angry at themselves because they behave. And, and they, but the thing is, it doesn't matter how angry they get at themselves. The event never com- is never corrected. It's never taken away. It's always going to be there. You have to sort of understand that at that point of the event that is, let's say, a very negative event, that it's these negative events, these traumatic events, are basically life-altering because they change who you are. And unfortunately, there's no. This, this is part of these consequences. There are decisions in life that when you make them, you can never take them back. And it doesn't matter how sore you are about them. And so you have to, in terms of the conflict within the mind, and this is where a lot of mental illness comes from, come from, it's a conflict within the mind, within, within the emotions, particularly. It's an emotional issue. And you can have a logic, a sense of something, you know, logically, but to have a completely different feeling. And when the feeling and the logic, in the emo- when the emotion and the logic, the you know, feeling and the logic, they collide when there's a clash, when there's a conflict, a serious conflict, this is what you call mental illness. Mental, mental illness. But of course, they're not going to talk about that. Like, oh, yes, there's a chemical imbalance. Same thing, the, the, the toxins, same thing as talking. There's a chemical imbalance. Hey, this pill is going to help you. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're taking the pill now. What's happened? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's got side effects. Look at all the side effects that happen with the drugs. You know, take this and, you know, you'll feel better, but you'll have diarrhea, this, that, you know. They tell you all the different ticks, you know, bounce of, uh, bounce of, uh, of uh, homicide, you know, hom- hom- homicidal and suicidal thoughts. These are all side effects. But don't worry. They've got another pill that can help that. But that has the same type of side effects. So they, you, you, you added one pill, and they added a second pill, pill in, a third uh, to fix the problems with the first pill. Then the, the, because the two pills have problems, they'll add a third pill in that will fix both those problems. But now with the three pills, you have problems. With all three pills, you're going to need a fourth, a fifth. You know, this is the pharmaceutical industry. Oh, don't worry. The medicine's there to make us feel better. <laughs> well, not necessarily. Once again, it's the same bit. The same bit of evil is there to lighten your load. Why? They're taking money from your pocket. And of course, when you have to go see these doctors, these psychologists, a lot of them are men, some of them are women. And, doctor, I've woken up. Why am I naked? How many times have we heard of doctors having relationships with their patients? This is what happened with Alan. Ellen went in, didn't, didn't know how was she was feeling, was confused about different things. In this case, the doctor was female, and, oh, well, oh, you're gay. How do you know I'm gay? Well, I slept with you. That's right. Ellen's therapist had a relationship with Ellen. That's when she became gay. So, um, prior, to the election, the, prior to the relationship, you didn't really know you were gay? And, well, no. But after the relationship, you knew you were gay? Yeah. And I've always been that way. Is that, and so what happens now, here's the way happens, because this is something in terms of the narrative, it's accepted, it's normal. You can't go back and say, oh, this, what the, what the doctor did to the patient was unethical, because now the ethic has been removed. Because the path to being a homosexual is now normal. Even though on a clinical basis, you would say that it's abuse. Or unethical, but no, oh, saying that it's normal now. It's well, okay, okay. That means the abuse is normal, right? Democrats don't torture. Bradley Manning came in, went into the prison, and came out. Chelsea Manning. Whatever happened to him in there to make him go from Bradley Manning to Chelsea Manning, because the transformation, which is trans, is normal. Oh, those feelings are normal. The abuse that occurred, the torture that occurred, is normal as well. No discussion. Out it goes. So what happens is that when you know you have this, you know, the people who are you know professors who abuse, you have uh, administrative staff who abuse, 
doctors who abuse, and why? They're all on the state. They're all getting this money. I mean, this is the whole case of Ghislaine Maxwell. How many people were involved? You should see, you should see the defendant list. I should say the, confo- the co-defendant list. Everybody is on it. And the thing is, is that all the stuff is with Enosis. It's, it's all Gnostic. This is part of their religion. And Gnosis, in terms of the, this understanding on the left, it is their religion. <clears throat> and in, in books, I mean, people read the, some of the books in history. Like they were reading the books, you read the books about uh, uh, the sacking of St. Sophia. This is the collapse of the, the uh, real Roman Empire, the, the, the sacking of Constantinople. And the sacking of Con- Constantinople was not done by the Muslims. It was done by the Roman Catholics. And in the process, this was written down in history, these things were recorded. They would go into the churches they burned to the ground. Christian churches, not mosques. They burned the Christian churches to the ground. And on the altar ta- tables, they would have these so-called parties. And of course, uh, they would have this girl on the, on the altar table. And they would do, well, sexual, sexual activities with her. And it would be done. The girl would be held, and this is from an album on Black Sabbath. If we look at the, the uh, group Black Sabbath, there is an album cover where they have a girl on a particular altar t- table. They are in the process of attacking her. And the, the shape that she is in with their shape forms a pentagraph. In other words, the, symbol, the symbology is there, and that's a black mass. They're not, no, one ta- no one talks about that. That aspect of the black mass is completely left out. But this is what you see. Once you understand what black, was going on in Black Sabbath, go back to the book and see that they were describing the same thing. In, in, in the books uh, on uh, the sacking of Constantinople, well, what you saw there was the, the papacy, the, the so-called Teutonic Knights, which became the, the Masons and the Freemasons. They were having black masses. Going to Dostoevsky and reading about the, the discussion on monasteries, the difference between the original Christian monasteries, they call the Orthodox monasteries, and the Catholic monasteries. The Catholic monasteries always had these hotels nearby where they kept their so-called mistresses. And so, oh, are these your mistresses nearby? There was a nearby hotel to the monastery, uh, which which, which housed uh, Elder uh, Zosimas and his young charge of uh, uh, Ilyosha uh, uh, Karamazov. This is from the brother Kar- Karamazov. And, and, and the comment was, no, we don't have mistresses the way the Catholics do. So people say, oh, yeah, the, 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 the Catholics, they have these mistresses. They're not mistresses. What I, why are the girls there? Why are these girls who are so-called mistresses there? Because these are for black masses. This is what you see in, in, in Black Sabbath's uh, album cover. It's the exact same thing. This is what you see in the uh, sacking of uh, Constantinople. You see the exact same thing. So the, the, the evil of the black mass has been there from the beginning of the of the papacy from 1000 AD. They're the ones who set up the European state. This is why it's back to the way things are right now, back to the pagan state, where you have the elite who are ordained by God, or gods, you have the vassal state that they set up, and when you set the vassal state up, you give people of different races, whatever they are, power, you give them money, you give them influence, and then when they have that, your vassals will protect you, because they don't want to lose what they have. So you don't, they're not going to even mention the upper, the upper people. They're going to attack you because you're threatening their wealth. I and mean, this is what you, you go after Felicia Richard. She's a vassal. She is doing what she's doing because she's protecting the elite. This is what happens with most of the, the people who have been elected, the, the Democrats, the black men. Well, what happened to them? They were, they were, they, they were, they, they were right smart. They were there with Martin Luther King. What happened? Simple. They became vassals. They were given pieces of supply. They were bought off. There was something that they were, the, the elites came up with that said, ah, oh, I want that. And when they did that, it, people who you would not imagine would sell out, sold out. And this is the nature of the, it. it it's, it's not about, for, in many cases, it's not about forcing people into evil or demonic choices. It is. People are drawn into it 
with promises of wealth, money, power. And so they're not going to come, again, because it's, it's, it's couched in class, not in race. It's couched in class. Richard, you know, Felicia Richard, who, who was initially Fifi, uh, you know, Richards, She's not going to come down and help poor people. She's going to protect her own who are a part of the vassal state. That's why she's working there to protect the uh, the deans at home. I'm here to listen. Oh, no, you're not. You're here because, one, the cameras are there. You're getting a bit of fame. and you know, You're getting your, your, your name in the paper once again. You're becoming more important. And you're there to help the people who are collecting X amount of money. And, of course, you're going to get a, a piece of the pot. You're, you're going to get part of that uh, 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 the slice of heaven, if you will. Uh, and you're going to add to what you already have. Of course, they're not going to give the people down below because, well, there's not enough for everybody. Sorry. <laughs> this, this is, this is nosy. This is the left hand path, and this is what the left is. This is what the Democrats are. This is why they think the way they think. This is why they do the things they do, and this is why they act the way they act. Anyways, uh, well, we did a good enough uh, job on this, and uh, it's now about uh, twelve thirty, so. Uh, see you on the inside. Uh, this is the end of uh, the Nosey's vlog. We got the we got the observation vlog and we got the uh, Nosey's vlog done. And I hope you get a better understanding. That does talk does take a while. How we are not part of the elites. I'm not part of the elites. Ever been part of the elites? Don't want to be part of the elites uh, because they're not going to have a happy life. We'll leave you with one bit of Nosey's from the from the other path of Nosey's. This is the early Christian path of Nosey's. Fundamentally different, where you seek humility, you seek to be humble, you seek to be one with God. It's a, it's a spiritual path, it's a dharmic path. And they have the view in the gospel, and this is completely missed by most of these Bible thumpers. Uh, it's, the, it's the story of the man uh, of Lazarus, the poor man. He, Lazarus was the beggar, he was all, they have an icon with him. And there was a rich man that he used to uh, frequent in terms of the rich man would, would always uh, uh, eat, and there was always a lot of food left over, and so he'd feed the dogs, and f scraps would, do would fall from the table, and the dogs would eat would eat, eat pretty well. And so Lazarus joined the dogs and became, became one of the animals underneath the table. And so the icon, this, this is uh, some of these pictorial uh, representations, and this is what an icon is, it's a pictorial representation. Uh, uh, representation of the event and it's given to you from a point of view that you're all seeing it's an omniscient eye rather than being a perspective point of view and other than the table you see uh, Lazarus with the dogs eating the food from the table of the rich man the dogs are seen licking uh, Lazarus uh, Lazarus who was poor didn't have a lot of clothes on you know he was not well kept he had a lot of sores and the dogs will lick at the sore in order to heal it in other words, the dogs were taking care of him. But the rich man took no notice of Lazarus or the dogs. And so he kept what he what he did, and he did what he did, and kept no mind of it. Well, it, time came to pass that both of them had passed away. And you see, uh, the rich man looks up and sees uh, sees uh, the Lazarus in the bosom of Abraham. That's the this is the this is the heaven for uh, prior to Christ. So it's, it, this is it's Abraham is the is the father is is the the resting point, where the rich man is in hell. And he's asking he's asking he sees uh, Abraham ask Abraham Abraham you know, you know let let, Isaac, let let uh let Lazarus get, just dip his, his his fingertip in water uh, and help him quench my thirst he's you know he he's in torment in hell. And hell is basically your worst nightmare. <laughs> they 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 add a little bit of uh, of physical sense to it and they tell the story so. But the thing is, you imagine something where you are kept away from things you, you, you want or actually need. And the, the understanding here is that why did the rich man end up in heaven? Because he didn't really seem to do anything really bad. He ended up in hell, in Lazarus in heaven. Those who had good things on earth and in life... Uh, will end up in hell, but those who had the horrors of life, the slavery, will end up in heaven. And the thing is, is what you see, you know, this is also a theme throughout the gospel, is about forgiveness, mercy, 
and compassion for the fellow human being, for the love of man, the, the philanthropy. That's what philanthropy means. Philanthropy means love of man. And I'm not talking about man the gender, we're talking man the species. Without this, and, and, and philanthropy is done without expectation of return. It's not, oh, I'm expected to be rewarded for this, but that's not philanthropy. Philanthropy is you do something simply because, not because it makes it feel good, but because it makes another person feel good. That's why you do it. In this case, what you see in the icon is you see the dogs having more compassion on Lazarus than the rich man. This is the nature of hell. This is this this is how the person, the rich man, created hell on earth for himself. He, he, he created the hell he was going to. Didn't see it. Didn't understand it. But this is the way it ended up. And this is what happens now with, with the division between elite and 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 uh what you have down below is that the ones who are down below, the slaves, will have a better life in the afterlife. Well, the other ones, the rich, who have no compassion for anybody, and we've seen this, uh, will end up in hell. We are Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life. Oh.